What's going on guys? Got my final delivery to complete the net city. So there's a seller on uh, eBay. I think his name is Sell, 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 but the L's are I's. And he sells pretty cool artworks for different cabinets. And luckily he sells for the Blast, but the net city and the Blast share the same dimensions pretty much. So this is a bunch of different artwork and then all the character moves but it's all in japanese which is cool you know it's a japanese cabinet but i do like that the marquee here this top one here um it's really good material it's actually made out of plastic you just print it over it so that'll help shine the light even better no this is not really black it's more like a gray black so i don't really care too much for it but it's like a matte finish so i think it might shine pretty good we'll see how it goes once i stick it on there and but finally i can finish it up like i said i'm running a pc so let's see how this goes all right guys i figured i'd show you how i put this all together i'm now finishing up putting the artwork D cleaned up the the marquee with novice and you can see it's much cleaner so novice does wonders on stuff there i've already put the artwork there I did novice on here. I'll do repaint later on down the road. I'm not in a rush for that. But uh, you remove these side panels here. They're just screwed on there and then they slide right up. You need a minimum of nine feet of clearance because if not, they don't come out. <laughs> so you these probably have to do them outside if you, if you don't have tall uh, ceilings. Uh, but regardless, you can run your wiring through the inside here and then run them through here and then straight down to the control panel, I mean, to the inside of the cabinet here. And then uh, I routed my USBs there. The other thing you have to watch out for is you have to make sure that it has the original VGA cable for the cabinet. Um, if you try to put our standard VGA cable for my computer monitor, um, you have to be very careful. You have to remove pin nine, I believe. You can see here that it's missing the pin. And that's because that pin will throw an extra voltage to the monitor or the CRT monitor and that will damage it from what I've read online. So if you're going to connect a PC to this monitor, make sure that that pin is not there. If anything, if you, if you want to use a standard VGA cable that has all the pins, make sure you bend and remove that pin. That way that you don't destroy... <laughs> You're very delicate, uh, and I now monitor. <laughs> um, so then you run your PC, whatever you want in here. Um, I will plan probably to bypass this amp down the road. Um, I'll still leave everything there, don't get me wrong, but I'll probably do the upgrades to a better amp just because I want to do that. You know, I'm just that guy. Um, it is missing a, oh no, it does. It has the little bitty, uh, fan here i'm going to replace that with a better fan but <clears throat> you can see that i've spliced in here for an outlet service outlet so i've been able to splice in here the ground and everything for the service outlet that way i can connect my pc or whatever i want and make sure you ground it because if you don't ground it then you're gonna have voltages going through the through here and uh, you might get shocked shocked i mean so better to do that the only downside that because I routed the wiring back here is there is two switches here to power this machine on. There's a switch back here and there's a switch right here in the front. So if I turn on this back switch, it will turn on that. And uh, so that's the only drawback. This, this cabinet needs both to be on to work, but because I kind of bypassed this switch, if I turn it on there, it gets current there. But it's not that big of a deal, honestly. I can just run this on a smart plug and have it always on and then the smart plug will turn it off for me, you know? So that's a good way to get around it. It has all the original stuff to run Naomi, have all the wiring for it. It has the power supply, it has everything to run the Naomi stuff here or any JVS setup, but I'm not, I'm not gonna use JVS. So I figured I'd cover that before I put it all back together. It is done guys. It is awesome. It looks amazing. I just got it opened up here for you guys so you guys can see so it's running Botticera, so I can play any game that I want on main, Super Nintendo, whatever I want, you know. Uh, right now I got it running on zero delay, uh, you know, cheap uh, zero delay 
boards here that I took out of this bar top that I was using. I'm gonna run Pico boards later, but right now I was just having it hooked up so I could play. Um, it, it will eat my inputs every now and then, but it's playable for now. Like, if for tournament use, I won't use that. Like, if I wanna play like competitively, no. But for like just general, like people playing, it's fine. So I'll use my Pico boards, Pico boards later for like people that wanna play like really, you know, not have to worry about that. Um, I ended up using the Novice. That Novice really cleaned it out. It was kind of hazy and dirty, but that really cleaned up. Novice does wonders on plastics. And then, like I said, I ran my LEDs there. So that lights here and it lights up there. I went with cool whites. And then the monitor looks really, really good, honestly. I haven't done much adjustments to it. The only thing that I will have to do later is there is a blue and red convergence issue here. You can see it, you see red and blue over here. So that's super common on this uh, chassis. It's a Nanao 2931 chassis. They're notoriously known for this issue as they age. So you have to put in like these convergence strips, these little magnetic strips to kind of get it resolve it. It won't be perfect, but it'll be really good later on. It's common on the blast as well. It's just who knows why it's an issue. But regardless, it's fixable, but I'm not too worried about it. It doesn't bother me too much uh, for now at least. So I'll have to fix that. But honestly, there's not much of an issue down here or here, which is also super common. But I don't see it on the corners, so it looks really good. So it's just the top corners that I got to fix. And then I ended up taking this apart, cleaning it all out. It was super filthy, dusty, dirty. So on the inside, it's been cleaned out again, and the outside as well. And I went with my trusty uh, Chemical Guys VRP. This stuff is really, really good. It gives a really good shine to the plastics. So I always clean all of my CRTs with this type of stuff, and it really cleans up the plastics. It comes out really, really good. So let's go back to the front. Um, I'm going to change out these and put buttons there. I'm going to have to find the right size button so I can run my coin button and my hot fix. So that'll be later. I'm not worried about that. And then I'm running an Optiplex, I believe is what it's called. Dell Mini PC. Um, I got it off the marketplace for like under 100 bucks. Buy it off a person. Um, you see these used a lot in business and stuff like that. So sometimes you can find them in surpluses. You just have to make sure that it runs VGA natively. Because VGA can send out a, an analog signal that this CRT can can handle. Now, not all CRTs can handle that native signal because VGA, you can send out, for, for mo mostly all computers, you can send out a 480i signal pretty easily into a monitor that can handle it. But these are a little bit different. These, these chassis can handle, these are called tri-sync monitors. So they handle 15, 24, and 31 kilohertz, if I'm correct. And the 31 is the high res mode where it can handle 480i so you can see there or 480p i think i might be wrong who knows but regardless it'll handle the signal <laughs> without me having to do any modifications because there is groovy main and there's there's ways to get botticero to send out a 15 kilohertz signal which is you know standard res 240p signal um but there's a lot of stuff you got to figure out to make that happen it's not easy at least for me it wasn't easy to figure that stuff out so the only issue you're gonna run into with Botticero that I will say is if you're gonna throw this on a tri-sync, um, when Botticero first boots up, it'll boot up in like a 1080p setting. So it wants to send that 1080p signal out first. And this monitor, if you try to send it a higher res signal out through VGA, it acts weird, it makes weird noises. And I only heard that like for a few seconds, I immediately disconnected it. So don't do that. <laughs> So my temporary solution when I was running this mini PC is to turn it on without it being connected. And so for the first 30 seconds while, while Botticero is loading, I'll leave it disconnected. Once Botticero loads and I see that on the USB, it's no longer flashing, I'll hook it up and I know that it's already in the 480 uh, resolution that this monitor can accept. Now in Botticero, you, you can also change the settings to run in at the six, uh, 480, uh, 640, 640 by 480 resolution, um, it won't come standard. There's, you have to mess with some of the text files to make it, force it to go into that 480 resolution. And then you can go into settings on Botticera and set it into 4.3 aspect ratio. So that's how you can see that it's running in the right aspect ratio and everything. Because if not, it'll be running in that weird 
widescreen try and tune or it'll cut off the sides or whatever. So there's a look, it's not plug and play. It takes some time to figure out, but once you get it figured out, you get this and which is really good. So that, that's probably the longest, hardest part about all of this when you're figuring out Botticera for the first time is how it works and how to set the control panel. Oh my God, setting the control panel was a little bit confusing. I literally got a napkin and started writing down what each button was doing. And so I had to figure that out. Now, when also one more thing with Botticera, if you're using the same uh, board, then you must make sure that each button is set to the same input on the board because if you set up one board, you set up both. In a sense. And I didn't do that. So I had to learn that the hard way. I was like, why are my buttons being all weird all the time? So you learn from all these mistakes. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, this is really fun to do. I'm really glad now I have, you know, a CRT running, Super Street Fighter 2. Even though it's emulation, who cares? It, it plays good enough for me. I'm not going to complain. I can find the original boards later on down the road, not too worried. Or I can convert my, I have a CPS2 board. I can convert it with the dark soft mod and run all the CPS2 games on there. And I can say, hey, I'm running an original arcade hardware, right? But it doesn't make much of a difference to me. As long as I can play it and it's good enough for my taste, I'm good. I've had a, I had a guy that plays locally here in, in our area in tournaments. I've had him play on some of my setups and he says it's good it's good for tournament. So if he says it's good for tournament and he doesn't know too much of a difference, then I, I'm going to take his word for it. But regardless, I'm all Street Fighter'd out. I got the pinball. I've got a Net City with themed Street Fighter. And I've got still the um slot machine back there so a lot of street fighter going on here <laughs> so hope you guys enjoy the video and again you guys have a good one